A warm welcome to Shendras Engineering Tutorials. Signal processing, digital signal processing. When we speak about signal processing, Z transforms will be definitely a powerful tool. Z transforms. And uh, if the classification comes for the Z transforms, we come across a bilateral Z transforms and a unilateral Z transforms. The summation will be changing. For a bilateral, it will be from positive infinity to negative infinity. And for a unilateral, the summation will be the causal signal, like it's almost like a causal, n equal to 0, n tending from 0 to positive infinity, unilateral. Right? So, uh, there are some differences, especially in shifting property. There is a bit change in the shifting property while we evaluate for bilateral z transform and uh, that for a unilateral z transform right well, let's see what happens the summation with the change in the summation there is a change in the derivation something includes let me explain if what happens stay with me so a definition for a z transform and more precisely unilateral z transform is defined as a guys x of n will be given x of uh, n will be given the z transform a unilateral z transform of this one will be the given function i'm repeating in each and every my video so that you can that gets registered in your permanent memory please take it seriously um, this given signal x of n is multiplied with z raised to minus n and for a unilateral um, z transformation the summation will be the summation will be from n equal to 0 to positive infinity right and that which gives us a x of a z the notation the transformation n domain the time domain signal is transformed to z domain right so guys if this is the case what will be the z transform of z transform of x of a n minus 1 will there be any change no not that the given function x of uh, n minus 1 is multiplied with z rise to minus n and the summation here as it is the summation will be running from n will be running from n equal to 0 to positive infinity that's the only change okay there's a small transformation over here watch carefully you may be missing the beginner uh, that person who is trying to start with the z transformation and the properties may miss over here guys uh, what if it's a summation right for different values of n n equal to 0 n equal to uh, plugging in the value of uh, for the first time plugging in the value of n equal to 0 all over where we come across n plus plugging in the value of n equal to 1 wherever we come across over here plus etc etc right so what if we are uh, i want to take out n n equal to 0 from the series so how can that be written when plugging in n equal to 0 over here over here that becomes x of uh, 0 minus 1 straight away minus 1 and multiplied with z rise to 0 anything rise to 0 that will be 1 that's it plus and no i don't want extra ex expand completely and uh, the summation Hope you understood. I have done this one for n equal to 0. And now as n equal to 0 is taken out from the series, the summation will be running from n equal to 1 to positive infinity. Right? And it's as it is. x of uh, n minus 1, z rise to minus n as it is. Only this uh, not expanding for the complete n values n equal to 0 to uh, infinite i took out only n equal to 0 from the series and n running from 1 that's it right and guys remember like uh, we need to go for a substitution rule whenever we come across this arrangement here this one uh, we have to we have to go for a substitution right so that gives that simplifies the analysis according to math right so it's a what is that uh, let me suppose n minus 1 equal to any random uh, another random variable p let that be p 
right let that be pre p and we need to uh, substitute uh, the value of n over here after substitution that which gives us over here itself and from here n will be equal to p plus 1 we need to plug in the value of n over here negative as it is n should be plugged in with this n equal to p plus 1 for the simply after the substitution and another important point to be remembered is whenever we go for substitution there will be a change in the sum limit limits and it, it, this is no more n if p comes here the summation also should be for p and that will we have from here itself right uh, here n is running from n equal to 1 to infinite right when n equal to 1 where p will be running from where p will be right so that one we will be having from here itself here when n is starting from 1 here 1 minus 1 and this will be the 1 minus 1 equal to 0 in the sense when n is running from 1 p will be running from 0 this is the one okay so the second limit the last one sorry very sorry the last one when n is when n value is infinite and from this very expression it's a minus 1 which is equal to p uh, and as we know this one nothing can stand beside infinite so p will be infinite guys these are the new limits now these are the new values for summation 0 to infinite when n running from 1 to infinite p will be running from 0 to infinite okay so making use of this substitution guys remember whenever you come across x of something like this one that has to be uh, the analysis will be easier if you go for substitution right so in that case in this expression x of uh, minus 1 as it is right and uh, plus this is no more n minus 1 over here n minus 1 plugged in with x of p so i mean p so that takes the transformation x of uh, substitution p and uh, z raised to minus n is plugged in with p plus 1 p plus 1 and the summation will be it's it's a p so the summation that's no more n summation p will be running from here uh, 0 and here it's a 0 to positive infinity right and it's a very well known fact that powers are added so basis should be multiplied so that takes the transformation x of minus 1 plus summation p tending from 0 to positive infinity x of p now how can this be split into that's uh, z rise to minus p into z rise to this is applicable to this one z rise to minus 1 yeah it's z rise to minus 1 z rise to minus 1 we don't have the term p in that one so that has got nothing to do inside the summation that could be written over here z rise to minus 1 wherever we have p that will be inside the summation the z rise to minus 1 has got nothing to do inside the summation so that can be written like this one okay once again a small transformation over here let that p whatever wherever p that let that be plugged in with n again and when p starts from 0 n also st will start from 0 because no nothing operation like this one okay so n also starts from 0 and when p st uh, is infinite n also will be infinite because nothing no operation over here so in that case here it's a with all these substitutions p equal to n and uh, if p is running from 0 n also will be running from 0 to positive infinity so with that transformation we can write down that as x of minus 1 plus z rise to minus 1 it's no more p it's a with the substitution it's a x of n and even that will be z rise to minus p because it's p no operation nothing we had this one right we had this one so it's straight away p equal to n so no we don't need to um, pay more much more attention straight away we can plug in whatever we have p 
equal to n and the summation will be running from it's n right so it will be it should be n 0 to positive infinity right so guys can you watch carefully what is this this summation what is this summation here it's a uh, x of uh, minus 1 th that's as it is and z inverse also as it is come back come back come back here over here n equal to 0 to infinite x of n z rise to minus n it's x of z so n equal to 0 to infinite x of n z rise to guys it's no more p i'm sorry it's a uh, n right p should be plugged in with n substitution i'm very sorry so this should be this will be y should be this will be x of uh, z isn't it so what is that z transform of uh, where did we start from x of uh, n minus 1 is equal to this one guys the shifting property shifting property includes and what is this x of minus 1 a very important point over here the initial values initial values uh, yeah so what it says is yeah point to be remembered over here uh, bilateral z transformation shifting property doesn't include this one now we have for a unilateral z transform we have the initial conditions we have the transformation including the initial conditions very powerful uh, equation very powerful uh, property shifting property yeah we come across what do you do like if the initial values are also given if the initial values are also included in some numericals evaluating some numericals we will make use of this property it will be given these are the initial values plug in all that and uh, compute the final z transformation make a note please now what will be the z transform of x of uh, n minus 2 that was for this one this was for x of n minus 1 okay so let's see what is the z transformation of x of n minus 2 very important okay cannot be neglected let's do it uh, once again what happens over here what operation the given signal x of n x of uh, n minus 2 which is given is multiplied with what again z rise to minus n and the summation for what values of n n will be running from 0 to positive infinite uni they call it unilateral z transformation now what is this this has to like entire this thing it's a uh, n equal to 0 1 time plus n equal to sorry n equal to 0 1 time plus n equal to wherever we come across n over here over here we plug in the values of n equal to 0 plus n equal to 1 plus n equal to 2 isn't it that's the meaning of this summation right for a beginner okay <laughs> all these explanation for a beginner now so let me take out uh, what if n equal to 0 over here n equal to guys n equal to 0 okay because uh, let me write out clearly n equal to 0 plus n equal to 1 plus it goes on plus something like that when plugging in n equal to 0 over here here that will be x of uh, 0 that will be minus 2 x of uh, minus 2 and 0 z rise to 0 that will be 1 so it's that's it plus n equal to 1 plugging in n equal to 1 n equal to 1 that will be x of uh, here x of uh, 1 minus 2 that will be x of minus 1 z rise to n equal to 1 right so that will be z inverse right plus now plus or oh, let me stop over here let me stop it's a summation guys we are done with n equal to 0 n equal to 1 so n if i don't expand we'll in this expression in the extension n will be running from what we are done with 0 we are done with 1 it's a 2 to positive infinite and uh, x of uh, n minus 2 z rise to minus n as it is right so <clears throat> in my previous statement i have told that if this is the case for the analysis to be easier that has to we have to go for a substitution what is that substitution let that n minus 2 let that be some p p right and from this one we will be having value of n we need to have the value of n to plug in over here which has n equal to p plus 2 it's a 2 it's a crooked 2 don't mind and what if 
n will be running from 2 so if n is 2 what will be the value of p this equation this very equation gives that answer question the question is n if what will be the value of p when n equal to 2 so that answer for that question is over here itself when n equal to 2 minus 2 and so p that gives this equation says that p equal to 0 when n equal to 2 p will be 0 okay so this one when n equal to infinite positive infinite minus 2 which is equal to p uh, will anything stand beside infinite no it's uh, straight away infinite so p these are the new limits for p 0 to infinite right making use of these substitutions making use of these substitutions over here x of uh, minus 2 as it is plus x of uh, minus 1 z z inverse as it is plus it's no more n in the summation it's a uh, x of uh, n minus 2 plugged in with p and z rise to minus of n is plugged in with this entirely so that gives us straight away minus p into z rise to minus 2 this minus or whatever this minus will be applicable to this one and this one isn't it so that's and the summation will be here now we have a summation and uh, it, it the summation is for different values of p running from 0 which is equal to 0 to positive infinite hope you understood the transformation right so in that case and again this has got nothing to do inside the summation because it's independent of p we go for different values of p here we have p here we have p this is independent of p that has got nothing to do inside the summation that can be taken out and here itself well, let that uh, p be plugged in with uh, n let that p be plugged in with n so in this case if p is 0 n will be 0 right and with p equal to positive infinite n also will be positive infinite so making use of this transformation uh, writing the entire expression it's uh, x of uh, minus 2 plus x of uh, minus 1 z raised to minus 1 plus and with this substitution it's no more the summation will be no more for p that will be x of uh, n okay and uh, z raised to p is plugged in with n again minus n and the summation will be running from summation will be it's no more p right so n it's n uh, for different values of n 0 to infinite p equal to 0 n also will be equal to 0 p equal to infinite n also equal to infinite did i forget something no i didn't forget i left it intentionally because this has got nothing to do inside the summation that could be plugged in over here z rise to minus 2 okay so what is this again guys watch carefully this summation that could be plugged in with x of what i erased it right so that could be plugged in with here the final expression for the shifting property it's a uh, x of uh, minus 2 plus x of uh, minus 1 z rise to minus 1 plus z rise to minus 2 and this entire summation could be written simplified to x of z isn't it x of n z rise to minus n in summation running from 0 to infinite that will be x of z shifting property again uh, what where did we start from x of uh, n minus 2 x of n minus 1 was that x of n minus 2 is this guys very important one okay while evaluating some z transformation initial conditions will be given and we'll have to make use of this one this equation this shifting property of unilateral z transformation evaluating the final value theorem in z transforms has always been a confusion different experts suggest different approaches and uh, let's see if what is the a uh, simpler way to reach to that final value theorem making use of that property and so i've started with that one final value theorem where it starts from uh, what will be the z transform of uh, um, evaluating the z transform of x of n minus 1 minus x of n it starts from here so what is the z transform the definition according to the definition the given function what 
x of uh, n minus 1 minus x of uh, n this whole term the given function is multiplied with z raised to minus n isn't it and the summation will be and guys I stress on this point it's a unilateral n running from different values of n running from 0 to positive infinite right so guys a small statements over here like uh, this is our RHS and uh, these are LHS isn't it so separation exercising on RHS will give us something LHS give, will give us something we equate that and then proceed with the analysis right so RHS one time LHS one time considering the RHS what do we have in the RHS it's a what is a transform of uh, x of n minus 1 minus x of uh, n will be equal to according to linear to property this is applicable to this and this isn't it so that will give us z transform of uh, x of uh, n minus 1 minus z transform of x of n linear t property the very first property in each and every transformation it's easier right is applicable this transformation is applicable to this and this negative yeah fine so just now we have seen from there pick up that one z transform of x of n minus 1 making use of the shifting property it's a x of minus 1 plus z inverse x of z right for this entire term so that we'll have to go ahead with minus z transform x, x of n that gives us x of z isn't it here what we have is x of uh, minus 1 plus as what if we take out what if we take out x of z we have x of z common over here and over here taking out x of z as common and with the negative also negative x of z as common and negative has come out x of z has come out we have one over here so negative is taken out if it will be negative that will be positive and we'll go back to this one right so it rise to minus one right uh, any confusion x of minus one is written as it is uh, negative has come out negative and uh, x of z as common so one minus z inverse yeah that's fine now talking about uh, lhs lhs what we have yeah guys here lhs uh, we have uh, summation n equal to 0 to plus infinity x of uh, n minus 1 minus x of n this one this one this one please we have a bracket we have two terms term 1 x of n x of n minus 1 minus x of n and that's inside the bracket and here it's a uh, z rise to minus 1 guys uh, this equal to this isn't it so we have started from here okay but uh, this equal to this in the sense this equal to this this equal to this so what if uh, uh, say, uh, same operation on either side well, let that be it's equal to over here let us have let me say that on either side same operation on either side let that be z limit z tend to 1 on either side okay so here limit z tend to 1 on either side so if that is the case guys here here uh, this is independent of z understand here this will be applicable to wherever we have z so this is independent of z that can be taken out x of uh, minus 1 minus limit z tending to 1 and all these come so why because we have z over here it's a 1 minus z rise to minus 1 x of uh, z which is equal to on either side on the LHS guys we z tending to 1 do we have a z over here no this is independent of z even this is independent of z now this one now z is 
plugged in with whatever z is equal to 1 over here uh, guys it's uh, from the previous one it should be n right it's not minus 1 it's a n I did a mistake I'm correcting here itself it's a minus 1 so here limit z tends to 1 this is independent of z no plugging in that can this limit cannot be applicable over here even this is independent of z even that it's not applicable over here here now z equal to 1 1 rise to 1 that 1 right to 1 rise to minus and that's 1 so this plugging in z equal to over here as this is uh, this was a great confusion in the live class my experience in the next step z, e, z tending to 1 we don't have this anymore this comes down as it is there was a big question from my student what are, what are, what did you do with the limit over there because uh, plugging z equal to 1 we don't have this that comes down as it is uh, here the next step will be z will be n equal to 0 to positive infinite z tends to 1 this nothing it's a bracket again x of uh, n minus 1 is independent of z minus x of uh, n now plugging in z equal to z tending to 1 over here it's a 1 so we don't have that anymore that was the transformation in that way this limit has got evaluated I mean uh, this doesn't exist anymore in this step right so make sure this one this z, z tending to 1 is plugged over here so that's that become 1 and 1 it's a 1 so no more limit over that side right and uh, guys here what is what this says what this says this says that uh, it's a summation like uh, n equal to 0 wherever we come across plus n equal to 1 plus n equal to 2 plus etc etc up to infinity right hey guys another small transformation can be done over here over here now uh, here over here over here itself not on either side okay so summation summation n equal to 0 that's okay right here 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 this is the crucial point over here I am plugging in this infinite with a finite value n okay and uh, uh, that tra that transformation has to be represented over here I'll be representing like this one limit n tending to infinity similar to this one z tending to 1 this has got uh, this has no more existence in the next step in the same way this one summation n equal to 0 as it is this infinite with a finite value and that finite value tending to infinite we can do that and with this one uh, this continues like uh, x of uh, n minus 1 minus x of n okay so it's a uh, x of uh, minus 1 from here minus limit z tending to 1 okay z tending to 1 into 1 minus z rise to minus 1 it's a uh, x of z which is equal to what it's a uh, guys here limit n tending to infinite uh, let's uh, evaluate for the summation n equal to 0 plugging in n equal to 0 now it's time to watch carefully we have almost arrived at the point where we are whatever we are in search of now expanding this one uh, will you have to focus more on that one it's a uh, n equal to 0 n equal to 0 and this limit is applicable for the entire summation isn't it so here it's entire summation and uh, here n equal to 0 plugging in n equal to 0 x of uh, 0 minus 1 that's a uh, x of uh, minus 1 well, let me close the bracket okay for the first one right for the first for this one uh, n equal to 0 that will be x of minus 1 x of minus 1 minus x of 0 and I'll be closing the bracket okay I'm closing the bracket this for 1 plus again closing the bracket uh, this is for n equal to 0 isn't it so what next n equal to 1 n equal to 1 
if uh, for the second value of n the next value of n n equal to 1 that will give us a x of uh, 1 minus 1 that will be x of uh, 0 minus n equal to 1 isn't it minus x of 1 I am going to close the we have to close the bracket for that to be understandable plus what next uh, we are done with n equal to 0 n equal to 1 what next it should be n equal to 2 isn't it n equal to 2 will give us n equal to 2 that gives us when n equal to 2 that's uh, x of uh, 1 minus x of 2 right plus I will be writing over here the summation the continuation we are done with 0 1 and 2 what about 3 when n equal to 3 this should be here I'm closing the bracket for us to understand so that it's the, that term x of uh, 3 so it's 2 n equal to 3 so it's 2 minus x of uh, 3 guys it extends dot 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 right so in that case uh, n equal to this one the last one that should be plus the last term okay um, that will be yeah this one this bracket closing the bracket that should be n equal to this right x of uh, n minus 1 minus here minus x of uh, here for you to be more clear this n x of n isn't it? I've closed the bracket that's the last one so now you have to understand the series over here what is happening in the series can you see it's a minus one that's okay it's a minus x of 0 plus x of 0 minus x of 1 plus x of 1 minus x of 2 plus x of 2 so what's happening uh, in the inside the bracket this bracket this bracket this bracket this bracket what's happening in that bracket uh, this bracket in this bracket the second term in this bracket here minus x of 0 and the first term in that bracket is get that is getting cancelled this one this bracket in this bracket the once again this one the second term over here and the first term over here right the second term over here and the first term over here in the process even this will be cancelled with the first term of the next one even this will be cancelled like uh, this one the first term of this bracket is cancelled with the second term of this bracket right the, fir the first term of this bracket will be cancelled with the second term over here that's what is happening in the summation be careful and so we are left with what finally the destination the final destination here it's a limit n tends to infinite we had this one right it's a x of uh, minus 1 and uh, yeah, it's a minus over here minus x of uh, here that n we are talking about n n closing the bracket n, right over this side we have a uh, x of uh, minus 1 minus limit z tending to 1 1 minus z rise to minus 1 x of z isn't it so guys uh, limit n tending to 1 uh, sorry limit n tending to writing it again limit n tending to infinite so this has got nothing to do with this one it's independent of n so that could be written as x of uh, minus 1 minus limit n tending to infinite x of uh, this n this n it's in red <laughs> that won't stay anymore n over there because uh, this one and over this side it's a uh, x of uh, minus 1 minus limit z tending to 1 1 minus z inverse into x of z right so guys watching carefully something gets cancelled on either side here it's a uh, with the red cancellation with the red check carefully x of minus 1 x of minus 1 can gets cancelled on either side right and even this negative on either side gets cancelled 
and plugging in n equal to infinite n equal to infinite over here that will be a final destination x of uh, n tending to infinite right n will be infinite x of uh, infinite which is equal to what this is existing no more it's a positive on either side limit z tending to 1 uh, 1 minus z inverse into x of z guys a final destination expression for final value theorem in z transforms easier isn't it no how can i say that it's easy it's you have to say that yeah it was easy to understand now talking about initial value theorem what is unilateral z transform x of n will be given z transform of uh, x of uh, n which gives us x of z transformation n domain to time domain to z domain isn't it uh, how the definition for a unilateral especially unilateral z transformation it's uh, the given function uh, x of n n is multi it's x okay micro k n don't mind x of n is multiplied with z raised to minus n and uh, the summation for different values of n tending from running from n equal to 0 to positive infinite isn't it so here x of z will be equal to will be equal to uh, running n equal to 0 it's a uh, x of uh, 0 right z rise to 0 anything rise to 0 that's one it's that's it plus x of uh, 1 z rise to minus 1 n equal to 1 plus x rise to 2 z rise to minus 2 plus x rise to 3 z rise to minus 3 plus dot 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 that will be extending up to infinite. precisely this is equal to x of uh, 0 and uh, x of 1 z inverse it's z right plus x of uh, 2 by z square it's inverse plus x of 3 by z cube extending up to dot 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 will run to infinite so some common operation on either side of lhs and rhs here x of z x of uh, z a common operation on either side limit z tending to infinite limit z tending to infinite what will this is independent of uh, z right x of uh, 0 plus guys when uh, z is plugged in with infinite on all these values anything by infinite that will be 0 right it's a 0 plus 0 dot 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 in the sense uh, final uh, all these are zeros so we have the final one x of uh, 0 is equal to the limit z tending to infinite it's a x of z experts say that when there's a final destination uh, initial value theorem guys actually we need to start from here experts says that initial value theorem and final value theorem i started with the final value theorem because i was eager students are heading towards exams so i wanted to help them as i was very eager very eager to help them with the final value theorem so the reverse process don't mind and uh, the experts say that uh, with the initial and final values theorem if you have the z if you have the signal in z transform we can recover the time domain signal x of n could be evaluated we may not know if what it is but uh, the signal from z transformation we can convert that z transformed signal to time domain again we can extract that time signal again time domain signal again so hope you understood the analysis started from shifting property making use of that shifting property we have done final value. it's a continuation so i switched on to final value theorem so shifting property which includes initial values and then we switched on to final value theorem that was done and uh, here initial value theorem hope you understood the analysis guys please support me with your valuable share and a subscription thank you very much for watching